Hi, my name is Brittany Butler. I am the library assistant here at McGee Middle School. And my theme here in the library is hashtag 100 years of literature starting from the 1920s to 2020. We start here in the lobby and in the lobby we are doing 2000 to 2020. In each decade, we outline a couple of different things. We answer the question, how has reading changed in that decade? And then we outline some different points of that decade, or in this case, the 20 years. We have different events, influential people, and the overriding event that probably changed that decade or two decades. I like to have this part here in the lobby because it stops the kids and allows them to ask questions and start a discussion. And of course, here I had to put how reading has changed in an infographic. <laughs> because the kids always come with me, oh miss, the library's too boring, I don't like books. So I like to have that little, um, hey, go back to the lobby and why don't you read this? <laughs> All right, we're gonna turn over here to this wall. What I've done is I have taken the love of social media and molded it to fit the library. So we have an Instagram wall here and we've divided it up into different authors and their actual Instagrams. So kids can come in, they ask me to take out their phones and they can follow different authors here. So we have R.L. Stein as one, John Green, the author of Fault in Our Stars, and then a couple others. And I'm gonna rotate this by quarter. The last part here is probably the most pivotal for the library. We've taken Netflix and switched it to Bookflix. In all honesty, I didn't come up with this. I saw this on Pinterest. <laughs> and I decided to mold it for our school here. So you see different categories. One of the um, ones that will be changing is due to the different seasons. So for this season, we have Haunting Halloween. And then down here on the bottom, I have my aides. I have myself here in the second row. And then we have our counselors and our administration who have chosen their favorite books. And as you lift them, where they are located here in the library, as well as a brief synopsis. I try to make it relevant for the time. And I also try to make it relevant for what kids are, are looking for and what teachers are looking for. Here in our reference section, I have displayed actual newspapers from the day. Kids are allowed to come over, touch them, take them to a desk, read them. I actually had a kid, Miss Miller, are those real? Did that happen? Yeah, <laughs> very much, very much so. This, this helps to start that conversation of, yes, this happened, and now what are we gonna do? How are we gonna make it better? If we can start the conversation and get them talking, rather than tweeting out something that might or might not be true, then we, we've accomplished something. So our 9-11 display stays up all year long. Over here, we're walking into the main part of the library and we have the 1990s. Our research is still being done. However, we do have some books on display that were influential for the 90s. Here we have The Giver, which is a hugely popular book. I cannot keep them on the shelves. Ella Enchanted, Harry Potter, and Memoirs of a Geisha. I always like to talk about books to film and talk about how script is manipulated with text of the book. So I like to put those on display, not only just book to film, but it does bring up discussions amongst myself and the students and then the students at the tables when they come in for open lunch. Moving over to the 80s, I am a huge 80s hairband fan. <laughs> I grew up with that music, so I love to bring the music into the 80s. However, for the books, we know that Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark was made into a film this year, and so it brings up the discussion leading into this decade. We, we talk about different sitcoms of that time. Leading into sitcoms, I have Stranger Things. <laughs> Being that that was a huge hit over the summer, we talk about how they've kind of sensationalized that world and what it actually was like in the 80s. And then I bring it back to the books that are very popular from that time as well. Moving on to the 70s. The books that I have here are more of the fantasy. I've got Bridge Terabithia and then C.S. Lewis, Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. And of course, the kids know these books from the films before they come to check out the books. I like to have discussions on how each of these decades were different. And we start with the books, of course. Moving on to the 60s, I relate to my dad. My dad is, is all about the 60s. So we talk about the music. I grew up with Earth, Wind & Fire. I grew up with you know, that Motown feel all the time. So I like to relate that back to my, my literature as well. And then The Pig Man. This is one of the novels that is crucial to our curriculum here on campus. We have a lot of fun with this one. There's a lot of jokes that are had 
and then a lot of very tough discussions that are had uh, regarding racism, etc. When it's when these books are brought up, so um, I don't shy away from that at all. We we have open discussions regardless of who it is that comes in and asks the questions, and I encourage students to go out and find somebody else to have another discussion and point of view with them. So 60s, I could linger, but we're not gonna. Disney is very much apparent in my library. And for the 50s, I didn't want to just stay on that, but I also wanted to talk about media and how Disney affected media. A lot of people don't know that Walt Disney was very influential in TV and how Technicolor was brought to the television. On this lovely poster here, I talk about the important books, I talk about the important events. I like to have that discussion on how everything links sports, the arts, events, people, and the literature. Catcher in the Rye is one of our banned books. And we talk about these different uh, aspects of this book a lot, especially with my eighth graders. And we talk about how that affects their lives today. And a lot of them said, but Ms. Butler, how does a book that was written in the 50s apply to us now? And I said, all of these books apply to you more now than they did probably in the decades they were written. The 40s, for me, again, I relate to music, but then that also goes into the literature. We've got John Steinbeck, the wonderful, lovely fashion of the 40s. We could go on and on about that. When we're talking about war, when we're talking about the evil that is in the world, I try not to dwell on it. We have the discussion, we, we listen to each other, but it's always important to find the good and find the positive in any decade. And I think we have that discussion about this one as well. So let's move to the 30s. The 30s, I like to talk to everyone about the evolution of the written word, um, especially when it came to film and how media was sort of taking what was already written in books and bringing it to be able to be distributed in a wider format. I do like to talk to kids who are interested in the arts about film and how it is important when you're, when you're learning code, when you're learning how to utilize these different systems that these, as far as what's written in a book, is more important than what you can type into Google and learn how to do. We have a lot of discussions on that, and I've actually had a lot of arguments on that as well. But as far as what, I've ha what I have here, I like the kids to come and take these down, sit with them at the tables, and then have discussions with one another, and then ask me questions. I don't like them to ask me questions right at the beginning. I want them to have the discussions first, make, make some inferences, have arguments with each other and then they can come talk to me. The last decade we're gonna look at for the 20s, I had to put Charlie Chaplin in. I've actually shown Charlie Chaplin here in the library during open lunch. In this uh, decade here, I do have displayed a yo-yo and a moon pie. And so I like to have just little tiny hints of different things that were made during this decade. The moon pie was 1917. And then the yo-yo, as we know it now, was also made in the 20s. And then the main section here at the end of this little area showcases our multicultural section. This is probably one of the most important tables here in the library. I've had many, many students come in and they've heard about the books that they're going to be studying in their classes. And there are moments where they don't get to read them in their class. So they come to me, Ms. Beller, can I please check this out? I've had that happen and I say, absolutely, you can. Let's, let's get you reading it. But I always have a condition. You have to come back and talk to me about it. We have to have a talk about it. My favorite is The Outsiders. And then my second would be I Am Malala. I love to have conversations about these, these books specifically because they are the hard ones. Um, and I don't, again, I don't shy away from that. I want the kids to ask me the hard questions. I had one, one young man come to me and say, Miss Beller, I, didn't, I never read that in sixth grade, but I'm reading it as an eighth grader and I think it's better that I read it now. And that, I call that a win. <laughs> I call that a win. So that's, that's my library as, as far as, as my sections here. And um, I'm just, I'm very honored that I got to give you a tour. And thank you so much. Yeah.